We're back from our summer hiatus to bring you another episode of History Snippets. Camps and summer programming are wrapping up, so I'm delving back into some research about the Edwards' neighbors. Today, I bring you Patrick Giblin, who was a bootmaker that lived not far from the Edwards home. It isn't a stretch to imagine that he may have even outfitted Benjamin Edwards with a pair of fine leather boots. Patrick Giblin was born in Ireland around 1820 to Robert and Ellen, or Ellen and Jay, depending on the source you're looking at. He had at least one brother, Thomas, born six years later. In 1840, he began his illustrious career as a shoemaker, or in his words specifically, a bootmaker. I don't know where he lived in between Ireland and Springfield, but in 1848, he moved here to continue his business while raising his family and taking care of his parents. In 1850, Patrick's little brother, Thomas, joined the profession, but it doesn't look like he actually joined the profession with his brother. He may have worked for his brother, but he certainly wasn't acknowledged in the business name or in any advertising that his brother put in the paper throughout his entire career. Bootmaking is an interesting profession. Patrick made all sorts of boots, including winter specialty boots that were water resistant. They had double buckskin lined soles and were made of French calf leather. Patrick was also proud of his cork soles, which were very lightweight, and his dress or ballroom boots. One exciting time in Patrick's career was when he was able to enter a pair of his boots into the first ever Illinois State Agricultural Society Fair. The precursor to today's Illinois State Fair, this was in 1853. As now, the fair was held in Springfield that year, but it moved around year to year up until 1892 when it was finally decided for the fair to remain in Springfield. However, Patrick's experience at the fair was less than satisfactory as it appears that they actually lost his boots. They only found his entry again on the very last day of the fair when it was too late and everything was already judged. Ah, but never fear. They gave him a certificate for his troubles for superior workmanship and inferior leather. Patrick was understandably upset about this experience and took his concerns to the paper. I mean, fair. The note he wrote in the paper didn't ask for anything. I think he just wanted to complain. Again, fair. Patrick wasn't someone to complain willy-nilly, however. It just so happens that a few years later, his velveteen brown hunting coat was stolen. Uh, stolen is my words, not his. In fact, instead of asking for the coat back by accusation, he stated that he thought it was by mistake. He offered a reward and, in my opinion, really seemed to give the taker the benefit of the doubt. I think Patrick had to close up shop at the very beginning of the Civil War for a short time because later on in 1861, he said he was back up in business. If he had a partner, he was now on his own because he said he would work the bench myself and make the work as usual for my old customers that would wear no other man's make of boot but my own. He was planning on running back and forth between cutting and working the bench, which is incredibly difficult to do and time consuming. There's no telling if the stress of that is what led to his death, but he died only a year later in 1862. His brother Thomas took up the business at that time at the old stand, all to benefit his brother's family. Thomas also seemed to possess a lot less confidence than his brother previously did because he said he hoped he'd do a fine job. Patrick was buried in Calvary Cemetery in Springfield, later joined by Thomas. Thanks for joining us on the second half of our history snippet season, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.